So I finally played Titanfall 2, and after completing the campaign, what stuck with me wasn't your robot, the action, or that level. It was the title card. After witnessing the likes of Call of Duty and Battlefield throw their campaigns down a cavernous pit, this one transition felt akin to an ice-cold soda in the Sahara. This title card was the sign that Titanfall 2's campaign wasn't going to phone it in. In one shot, more creativity and style had been displayed than the majority of entire single-player components in this genre. Combining high-tech science fiction with an agile shooter, it's not a surprise that Titanfall 2's campaign sets up a power fantasy. The subcategory of fantasy isn't being a superhuman that crushes everyone beneath their foot, a la Doom. The story revolves around you being a badass in training, which is Titanfall's greatest parallel to Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare and that game's portrayal of Soap McTavish. It's no surprise that Steve Fakudas worked on Medal of Honor Allied Assault, Call of Duty 2, and Modern Warfare. Having been promoted from writer to director, he's retained the meticulous pacing of Infinity Ward's glory days, while combining it with the slick productions that we expect with AAA presentation, but rarely receive. Even the game's CG opening is a cut above its competition, as it establishes the importance of pilots and what separates them from your average soldier. Unlike Call of Duty Ghost that details the adventures of a silent guerrilla unit, only to open the game with an explosion, Titanfall 2 reinforces its opening by letting you experience the difference in pilot and soldier directly. The game's script is intelligent not because of mind-bending twists or shell-shocking revelations. It's smart because it understands that dialogue and narration shouldn't be treated as gospel. BT's protocols aren't fluff, their themes and plot points explored throughout your journey. Speaking of whom, BT is a lovable character despite being late to the party when it comes to badass robot companions, and it's because the bond between your pilot and BT is what's explored. To call him a sidekick doesn't feel right, as there are many battlegrounds you couldn't hope to survive in, and that I referred to BT as he, I think solidifies him as an equal. The option to select Cooper's dialogue isn't used as a gimmick or cheap selling point on the box, it's to connect you to BT. What surprised me about the dialogue selection is that it doesn't suffer from what Lore Runner has described as the Tor effect, where your character's tone isn't what you expected from what's shown on the screen. Because your dialogue isn't preset as mean or nice, it's simply about expressing what you believe is best in the moment, and no matter what you select, the connection developed between Cooper and BT is relatable and believable, as well as occasionally humorous. I think somebody's in love. A human's concept of love requires admiration, attraction, devotion, and respect. Conclusion, I am 50% in love. Rather than shoehorn a narrative into a world, Titanfall 2's writers and directors seemingly approached it from the opposite angle, observing what narrative would complement gameplay focusing on movement, shooting, and piloting mechs. The result is a story about progressing towards a goal located far in the distance, encountering mercenaries paid to end your said progress, and developing a friendship with your titan along the way. There's nothing about the plot that distracts or requires separation from these mechanics. It allows equal usage of free-running, shooting, and piloting, while expanding on the context and world in ways that weren't possible in the first game's multiplayer exclusivity. Having played Titanfall when it launched, I didn't put much thought into what the militia and IMC stood for, and how the latter was handled in this sequel was beautiful in its simplicity and subtlety. The game's bloodthirsty and narrow-minded villains are contracted mercenaries, and not the IMC's left and right hands, wisely avoiding the comical leaders present in other games. The IMC's apathy and artificiality isn't revealed through melodramatic speeches, but through an environment. While developing a friendship through dialogue, you're simultaneously exposed to the lengths this faction has gone to manipulate and control. And yet, after seeing the game's world through the eyes of a soldier allied with the militia, it makes me hope that in the next entry we explore the other side, something similar to Star Wars TIE Fighter or Battlefield II Modern Combat. Having the IMC be uncompassionate instead of comically evil only makes the story richer. And because it's wrapped around Titanfall's mechanics, the gameplay truly shines. This is one of the most effortless campaigns out there. Had I not needed to sleep, I would have completed the game in one sitting. It avoids the tired designs that grew from Modern Warfare's imitators. Gameplay variety isn't accomplished by granting you a toy built outside of the core mechanics. It utilizes the systems that Titanfall Sandbox allows and alters them accordingly. What's platforming like when the surfaces and walls aren't static? How do you deal with snipers pinning you down long corridors? What's it like to plan your wall runs and jumps ahead? 
It's a timeless form of game design, and Titanfall's expanded depth from Vince Zampella's previous venture means that Respawn's developers have only improved with time, and the campaign's brevity leaves no room for a level to focus on one gameplay element for too long. Just when a stage has focused on platforming for a decent amount of time, BT shows up and takes you for a ride. Come to think of it, the only issue related to pacing has to do with boss fights. On hard mode, they're a tad too easy to quickly cheese, and unfortunately, it's just the one area of Titanfall's sandbox that doesn't translate as gracefully into a single-player mode. The mech's relatively low health works in the multiplayer's lane-based design, with lots of cover, but against the AI, it's too easy to predict. Blowing up these characterized bosses is fun, it's just one of the few areas where the campaign isn't top-notch. The other is the enemy AI. Titanfall's animations are some of the best I've seen, mainly because the soldiers against you express their desperation and withheld fear so convincingly. But in terms of intelligence, they fall somewhere between a New Hope Stormtroopers and a drunken quadruped. And for what I can only assume is due to abilities being attached to specific characters, Jack Cooper's adventure only allows the usage of cloaking. But when BT is able to change loadouts on the fly, unlike in the multiplayer, this decision may have been simply to streamline development. It's only unfortunate because abilities are something that Titanfall 2 has greatly expanded upon from its predecessor, and being able to use the grappling hook or stim pack in the campaign could have allowed some more player expression. But ultimately, the bosses receive enough characterization to make their inclusion a net positive, enemies have enough variety to never boil down to stand, center screen, push button, and the lack of abilities isn't a deal breaker as a campaign entertains for its duration, which is why I'm going to warn you. Disclaimer: This brief section is going to heavily spoil Titanfall 2's campaign. As it's a great game that I thoroughly recommend, if you have not played it, I urge you to pause and click here or in the video description to skip to the next part of the video. Final warning in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Titanfall 2's campaign is proof positive that just because your plot may be predictable, it doesn't mean you can't have any surprises, which is why Mission 5, Effect and Cause, has gotten so much buzz. Incorporating time travel into gameplay that most have never seen in a mainstream title before, what begins as an atmospheric jog through the abandoned becomes one of Titanfall's highlights. But what stands out the most is that despite having a concept most would boast about until their lungs died, Titanfall 2 maintains its subtlety and restraint. Respawn leads the player through a miniature arc within the level's opening, at first introducing time shifts that many assume are flashbacks, to having a character in the world react to their presence, to receiving Anderson's device, and affecting the world. Then from there, another mini arc begins through gameplay, where you use the device in both shooting, platforming, and titan sequences. It is brilliant and time traveling doesn't overstay thanks to the campaign's brevity, leaving a lasting impact. This level poignantly exposes how Titanfall improved on Call of Duty's formula. I compare this time travel level to the AC-130 gunship mission, because they're both standouts in their respective games due to their dramatic shift in context. But whereas the AC-130 has little connection with Modern Warfare's gameplay, time travel in Titanfall adds directly to its inputs. Everything about Titanfall 2's depth is preserved, only with a dramatic twist. While Titanfall's presentation from its voice acting and music to its transitions is excellent, how its story attaches directly to its gameplay is what makes it special. While I may not have shed a tear at the loss of BT having called his death from scene 1, the anger I felt as I watched Sloane destroy him is a testament to the writing. Despite predicting what was going to happen, I was always eager to see how it was going to happen. Titanfall 2's multiplayer is an excellent example of how little changes in a short period can make a big difference. I participated in the game's multiplayer tech test, and while not let down, I deemed it as Titanfall 1.5 with worse maps and forgot about it. But after having played the finished product, Respawn must be commended for truly responding to important fan feedback. The industry has made many gamers doubt the importance of tests and betas as most are used as little more than a demo or to boatload the servers without an uproar. The difference in how Titanfall 2 feels compared to its earlier builds is night and day. The sequel's map design that when explored with decreased movement speed felt empty and restrictive now exhilarate and thrill with fast kinetic action. 
Going back to the original Titanfall now feels like putting on 40 pounds overnight without the slide enhanced stim pack and grappling hook. That is to say that Titanfall 2's gameplay is a cut above excellence. Whereas more measured experiences such as Rainbow Six dishes out blood pumping adrenaline in minute bursts within terrifying stretches of quiet time, Titanfall 2's perpetual battles always reward you with a rush of satisfying action. Everything from wall running to stomping soldiers to ripping an enemy pilot out of their mech is impossible to remain stoic about. The few inputs it takes to feel badass, even in a losing match, is what makes Titanfall unique. That's not to say it's an easy game, far from it. Matches will sometimes leave you utterly destroyed by enemies that understand the importance of exterminating NPCs in attrition, when to call in a Titan during bounty hunt, and how to defend an amped hardpoint. What seemed to turn my losing streaks into wins was not my precision in firefights nor the use of my equipment, but when to call in the Titan. The maps and loadout system in Respawn's debut led to Battlegrounds being a cohesive whole whether you were a Titan or a pilot, whereas the sequel has made a noticeable shift. Corridors have more cover, and sightlines for pilots are often inconvenient for Titans to focus fire on. It leads to multiplayer that has two separate games within a match, rather than a single massive battle. Playing Titanfall again made me realize why this decision was made, in theory. My mech usage was sparse, and deaths often weren't caused by enemy titans, but by coordinated pilots that are much more difficult for your hulking monolith to keep track of, with their abundance of secluded pathways and high damage anti-titan weapons. Titanfall's balance set up the mechs as heavily armored machines that could be destroyed with coordinated attacks in a short span of time. The sequel removed regenerating shields from titans, while making pilots have less opportunities to attack en masse. Death to Titans as pilots is no longer an assembled bomb, but a thousand cuts. Forcing pilots to actively expose themselves to an enemy Titan leads to players having greatly increased time piloting what's advertised on the box. But contributing to a Titan's destruction without being detected was very satisfying in the first game, and is far less effective in its follow-up. This means that there's plenty of situations during an attrition or bounty hut match where one team can't possibly make a comeback due to Titan dominance, removing agency in matches. I don't hold anything against Respawn for not being able to strike this balance at 100%, and it's not to say that Titanfall 2's design doesn't lead to interesting battles. Once I learned to strategize my Titan drops, I've greatly enjoyed the metagame that comes from the system, and it's enjoyable to coordinate while playing with friends. The Titan's lack of shields does mean that no shot is inconsequential, but long-term victory is never going to be as satisfying as an immediate impact. This change has also led to the rodeo being altered. Landing on an enemy Titan previously granted you the chance to rip open its metal and lay waste to the mech's core. Now it leads to a preset animation of your character ripping out the enemy's battery, and lacking control for multiple seconds in a game that's tightly controlled as this is going to be unavoidably clunky. Perhaps needing to hold on to a trigger while the animation plays out could grant the illusion of control, instead of leaving you to sit back and watch. But that's something to be explored in the future. There's really not much about Titanfall 2 that's actively worse. Different is more applicable, and nearly everything else is a substantial improvement. Progression is excellent with important weapons and gadgets not feeling unobtainable, and plenty of unlocks to chase after, wrapped around core gameplay that's enjoyable for the amount of hours required for some of these rewards. The expansions to Titanfall's sandbox are very welcome and don't conflict with what came before, abilities being the most important, striking the perfect balance of adding a layer on top of its gameplay without intruding upon firefights. One-on-one -on -one encounters are a blast, as despite the low amount of health due to the speed and abilities on offer, reversals are always possible. Having finally played Titanfall 2, I understand why those who've played it expose it to everyone they know. It's a title that is deserving of the users and recognition of its competition. Within two games, it's reached a seal of quality that is either equal or greater than franchises that have been around for over a decade. Electronic Arts has stated that Titanfall is a franchise they will continue to work with Respawn on for many, many years to come. For the sake of its creators and followers, I hope they're speaking the truth. Special thanks to Tierney McCarthy, Matthew Bingley, Reality Escape, Michael Stewart, Aiku Patrupai, and Eddie Toko for supporting the channel and making this video possible.